This is a good time, brethren, that we can set aside to focus on these things. These questions we have. This is a spirit opening this up to us so that we can think about this. And after preparing this, this is a good one. No, Hey, you got some questions? Just say to yourself, know you not? I mean, this goes, you, you can put this with all kinds of things. Things going on in the world, you get all frustrated. You, wait a second. Know ye not? You are a temple of God. The spirit of God dwelleth in you. I mean, this, 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 this can change the way you live your life and everything you do. People, I mean, people have foolish questions, but they, they don't have to be like this. You don't have to have foolish questions. You don't have to live your life foolishly. You could, you could just say to you, remind, this is a reminder of who you are. We're talking about the temple of God. <clears throat> so it, this it takes a lot of pressure off us too. We don't belong to ourselves. When tempted, we could say, that's not for me. You know, you got the temptation coming. You say, well, this, is, this is not me to do whatever I want with. I belong to God. He paid the price for me. I owe him. I can't answer that question. Flesh, Satan, whatever, you know, you're, you're tempted. This, I don't belong to myself. I can't give you, I can't give in to these things because I, I'm, I don't belong to myself to do this with. See, the world, see, they don't know this. They say, like Brother Gene just said, we have our rights. This is my body. I do whatever I want with it. Well, it's not your body. You don't have any rights. You've been bought with a price. It's his temple. So this, this will cut off a lot of foolish questions that men will come up with that have nothing, nothing to do with what God's doing. Remember, Jesus said, It is written, My house shall be called the house of prayer, but ye have made it a den of thieves, Matthew 21, 13. What are you doing here? You can't just do whatever you want. This doesn't belong to you. God's not happy with the men abusing his temple, doing what they want with it. You can't, you can't do that. Well, men think they can, but they can't. This was said when Jesus decided he was going to clean house, remember? He came in, and they had the money changers there. I mean, uh, apparently they thought that they could just do whatever they wanted. Apparently the, those who were around them thought that it was okay because nobody else was overturning the tables. They thought that this was legit. You could just come into the the temple of God, the, the sanctuary of God, and just do whatever you want. Hey, hey, wait a minute, wait, wait. We're helping people here. I mean, and we're making money that's, that's helping our families here. Well, you know what? It doesn't matter. You, this isn't for you just to do whatever you want. You think you can come in and do whatever you please? You can't do that. So the money changers, they, suff they suffered loss because they were, they were using this place that was for God to do whatever they wanted. Believers should not be confused on this point. Righteousness and unrighteousness cannot commingle. It doesn't, wor it doesn't work. You can't work it. it don't, you can't do it. It doesn't matter how people reason. They make up all these excuses. Well, this... Mm. Unrighteousness is always defaults to unrighteous. You can't have them both. Remember when people used to always say, what would Jesus do? They had those bracelets and everything. What, WWJ. Well, we, we see what Jesus would do. 
He made chords, had a purpose, didn't ask any questions, was not up for debate. We're not going to talk about this. Beat him out, the ones who were causing the problem, and he overthrew the tables. We're done with that. Okay? Out. So while men may want to debate about these things, while men may want to make excuses for why they just do whatever they want to do without God in regard to what they're doing, we see this is how the Lord takes care of it. This is how you deal with sin. This is how you deal with anything within you that doesn't belong. We don't debate about it. We cast it out. And now we can get to work here. Now we cleaned house. Next verse, what happens? The blind were healed. The lame were healed. God started working when the distractions, the things that had nothing to do with God were out of the house. You can't, God's not going to just work anywhere, brother. He's not just going to take building material that doesn't have to do, you're not going to build now, you know, we got, these, we got these great structures that men are so smart today they can't even figure out how they were built. These, these huge temples. But they didn't just use anything. Okay, some brain couldn't come along and say, well, we're running out of stone. Why don't we use mud? I was like, no, we can't do that. You can't just use any building material that you want. It has to be the right building material. God's not just using anything. And that doesn't matter what men think. Men say, well, we, God could just use anything. He could just work with anything. He can't just work with anything. He is doing work, and if we're going to be a part of it, we're going to be a part of what he's doing. You can't just do whatever you want and think it's okay. We don't want to suffer loss when it's over. God can't and will not work in a den of thieves. People may lie and say, God, he can work anywhere. They'll say, it doesn't matter how you live your life, or what you do in the temple. God still loves you just the way you are. But see, this is bigger than you. See, they're putting, a, they're putting a focus on you. It's all about you and what you, how do you feel. You know what? You're not going to be feeling pretty too good in hell for eternity. So while they're acting like they're the nice ones, Jesus was the nice one. He was the loving and caring one who got him out of the house so God could work. If you want to talk about loving and caring, how about he's cleaning us up and sanctifying us so he could use us for his purpose. How is that for being loving and kind? He cannot work with unrighteousness. The two will not be joined. So this is the point here, brother. It's his purpose. It's his work. And we don't want to get in the way of what God is doing. Notice, I want to know, you, you notice something here. That as Jesus was overthrowing the tables, it doesn't say anything about somebody coming up to him, tapping him on the shoulder and saying, hey, come on. Relax. Take easy. Be easy. I mean, nobody's temple is perfect. We all have a little money change. We're not going. We're, he's not. He was. This was not up for discussion. This was not up for debate. That's right. That's right. Discussion was not even going to start. No work was going to begin until they were cast out. Mm-hmm. Amen. Because we we're talking about the temple of God. We're the Spirit of God dwells. And no one is allowed to do whatever they want to do and be accepted by God. You know, it looked as though men could do whatever they want. You know, they set their tables up, and, but no work was being done. The work wasn't, it didn't even begin to be done until they got cast out of there. The temple of God cannot be joined with idols. So Jesus had to clean house. 
This is not an option. It doesn't matter what people say or think or how nice they sound or how loving or kind. It's what, what does God think that matters to us? We want to know in the end, are we on God's side? Yeah. So, okay, they set up shop, but they didn't stay there. Demonst Jesus demonstrated how wrong they were. This is not a time for negotiations with the flesh. Nor do we want to negotiate with our flesh. Mm -hmm. Our flesh doesn't feel like doing certain things. That's okay. Yeah. We don't feel like negotiating with it. Amen. It's to be crucified. Yes. Daily. You know, people will say, well, nobody's perfect. But God is. Yeah. Yeah. And as long as you're on his side, he will make you perfect. This is not the time to negotiate with flesh because we have nothing to talk about. When it comes to God, sin and flesh and unrighteousness, we have nothing to talk about. Because in the end, we do not want to be left with loss. Our reward is to be with our God, to be used by God. We can't reason with flesh. You can't have a light and darkness come together. If you have a room that's completely dark, I mean pitch black dark, and you bring in light, they can't come together. The dark leaves. So it's either you're going to have one or the other. You got to have pitch black dark. Or are you going to have light in the room? They both can't go together. Yeah. They are completely different things, totally separate. See, I, don't, I understand the world says, oh, no, no, we, we can merge them together. You can't merge them together. Yeah. It doesn't matter how much you want it to happen, how bad you feel it should be, how nice you think it is, they just don't get merged together. Why do people that are reconciled with God backslide and go back? It's because somewhere along the line, they've been convinced that you can merge these, th to, these together. And what happens? They go back, not forward. See, whenever, whenever you're thinking, well, eh, we'll, just, we'll just give in a little bit in this area. Well, no, no, you're going to go back. Can't negotiate. At some point, they become, they were unequally yoked. They allowed this to come in. They defaulted the flesh, and unrighteousness could not stay. There was no, there was not the two to come together. It would be like me having a, a glass of pure water. And I'm going to give you this water, and as I'm going to give it to you, you know it's pure, it's pure, we know that. It's completely pure. I'm just going to pour a little bit of, sewage sludge into it, just a little bit, just to give it to you, you would not drink this water. Why not? I mean, it's about as obvious as this right here that we're talking about, but it's your body would reject it. It, it would be totally rejected. It would, you would feel sick before it even touched your lips because it was unclean. Yeah. It wasn't the pure water. The pure water didn't overcome the sludge and the it was a sludge that made it unclean. They, they did not mix. You couldn't say, well, we got half pure and half unclean, you know, so it's clean. No, it's not clean. It's not clean at all. It's not good. It's unacceptable. Your body is rejecting it before it even comes to you. You already feel that sickness. It's like you're ready to, ugh. Don't even, don't even give it to me. It's unacceptable. Know ye not, the, so is the Spirit saying to you, know ye not, this is like fundamental here. Yeah, amen. You know, he's talking to the Corinthians who were not in a good position. Mm. So he's, telling, he's saying, know ye not? <laughs> Don't you know this? Mm -hmm. That you are the temple of God and the Spirit of God dwelleth in you? 
The Spirit of God will not stay if the temple of God is allowed to be turned to a den of thieves. It must be cleaned or suffer loss. Flesh and spirit cannot be joined together. It may sound obvious. It may sound very reasonable. But the reason we're going over this is because we're living in it. We have to fight to see this. You may, this may be very clear to you today. And tomorrow, because we have the flesh to deal with, the world to deal with, everything, all these things are coming against us. You, you have got to put your, put your armor on daily, and you have to press forward to see it. This is not just going to come to you on a daily basis. Oh, I got it now. I'm done. I'll just go about my way. No, it doesn't work like that. As obvious as it sounds like, there, there's only one reason it sounds obvious to you, if it does at all. The only reason that this is clear at all is because God has revealed it to you. It's because he's opened up the truth to you. Why do we have so many people running around that can't see this? It's because God hasn't, he hasn't given them to see it. And if God has given you to see it, you better not let go of it. We must be like Jesus in this way. That if we be in the temple of God, see anything that you know that cannot be joined with Christ, overturn it and toss it out. When people, are, they say they're believers, but they're not living as believers, there are some tables that haven't been overturned. Somewhere, somewhere along the line, somebody came in with their tables and set up shop, and we allowed it to go on. You can't allow it to go on. Flesh will say, hey, hey, no one's perfect. Take it easy. Relax. Come on. Have a little fun. Jesus says, faith believes God. Be ye therefore perfect, even as your Father which is in heaven is perfect. Matthew 5, 48. If that's a hard saying, that's okay. Overturn the tables. Get the things out of your life that is making it hard for you to see it. And repent and come to God. The temple of God is where God dwells. It's a place where God resides. It's not a place for thieves. It's not a place to be just given over to anything. See, we don't have like a distant relationship where God, he's just taking care of us and we're just kind of doing our own thing. No, see, this is not distant at all. He's, he's working within us. He's preparing a people to build with, to work with, building material. We don't want the building material to be rejected, but it will be rejected if it's not pure, if it's not, if it's not perfect to use, to be used for God's work. We are God's temple. He said, I will dwell with them. Know ye not that I, you are. Not should be some day. We're not just going to magically one day. He's, he's making us, preparing us now, working in us to fit in there. Amen. He's dwelling in us now. Amen. I mean, to me, this, may, this, this t- changes the way I see things, and the way I do things, and the way I open myself up to certain things. What, what am I doing here? Do you really love God? If you do, you will be ready to clean house. If you see something that you know is not right, it's, not gonna, it's gonna be pushing God out, you're gonna push that out. I mean, if you love God, I'm just saying if you love God, I mean, some people say they love God, they don't, but they don't do anything. It's like, well, you say one thing, but your actions, they do something different. So just as Jesus showed us that things must go, the Spirit will open this up to us. I mean, this is not, this is bigger than Ten Commandments here. Yeah. This, is, this goes way deeper than Ten Commandments. I don't have time to write out what I think you need to get rid of your, in your life. I've got my own things that I'm working on. The Spirit's opening my, and so this is a, you continually working on this, the clean house to get it ready for God. So this is our time, brethren, to prepare. We're, we're preparing now to fit in there. Daily we are making decisions on either kicking the world out, overthrowing the tables, 
or kicking God out. I know that sounds harsh, but that's what people do every day. I'm talking about believers. He, these are the Corinthians. Paul was talking to. We're going we're to be either making this temple a place for God to work and dwell. Work! To do a real work. Amen. Amen. Or we're not going to be used by God. And if we're not used by God, what are we going to be used for? We were made to be used for God. So if God can't use us, after he's done everything to sanctify us and to make us usable, what are we going to be used for? The trash can. Because you remember, it was only when Jesus cleaned house with that God did any work whatsoever. It didn't matter what people thought or they thought it looked like. A lot of busy work going on. But it wasn't God's work. Acts 20, 32 says, And now, brethren, I commend you to God and to the word of his grace, which is able to build you up and give you an inheritance among all of them which are sanctified. This is a work of God that he's doing within you. And he's able to do it. You think you can't do it? That's because you can't. But God can. He's able to sanctify you. And he's able to build you up in such a way that you can be building material to be put with the rest of the body to sanctify you so that he can dwell in us as a whole. See, we're, see this is not about us individually. It's about us together being a place where God could do work. It's to be used by God for his purpose. Our inheritance is to be with our God, to be used by our God. I mean, who doesn't want to have a purpose? Well, I mean, you know, we have people today that say, what is God's plan for my life? What is my purpose? We're seeing it right here. We don't have to wonder what God's plan is or his purpose his purpose is to make you to be a dwelling place for himself to do work in. Amen. We see this in uh, Exodus 29, 43, where he says, And there I will meet with the children of Israel, and the tabernacle shall be sanctified by my glory. It, the tabernacle wasn't sanctified because of what they did was because of what God was doing. And he was going to meet with them because of what he was doing. Verse 45 says, God will dwell among the children of Israel and will, I say will, be their God. What does God want? He wants to dwell with us for eternity. He wants, he wants to prepare us to sanctify us which he has done in Christ Jesus to do a work. We see that the purpose is for God to be involved in his people, to dwell with his people. So my question is, does this sound good to you? It sounds good to me. For my whole life, I wonder, what is my purpose? What has God made me for? I never thought for a second that God would put so, invest so much into a nobody like me for no reason. Well, I had one thing right. Apart from God, I was a nobody. And in the world, I'm a nobody. But for God's purpose, see, now I find out and we find out we are somebody. God is the reason for this temple. If it was not for God's to use, there would be no reason. No use. It would be tossed out. So there's something inside of everything, everyone, brethren, who wants to be useful. I mean, unless there's something wrong upstairs, everybody wants to be useful. They want to be a part of something. They want to have a purpose, a purpose of being. Those who feel like they have no purpose, they, I mean, the world, they just say, well, they just they commit suicide. This is, this is like this is like a person who's got to the point where they have no, they feel like they have no purpose whatsoever. 
But see, we have a purpose. Man has a deep desire to be used. Today, the focus is on God's plan for your life as an individual. I hear this all the time. But what happens when you don't be successful, as they say, is successful? See, when God's using you, you are successful. Because God is very successful. He's successful at everything that he does. The plan is that we, and I say plan in quotes, that we are the temple of God for his use, which is his purpose. It's really how we should say it. Because of Jesus, we are clean. We are sanctified for God's use. Our life has been given to us to be dedicated to God for him to use. Yes. So he's paid the price for you. Yeah. You don't belong to yourself. Mm -hmm. You are free. Yes, you're free. Mm -hmm. You do have rights. You have a right to give your life to God. Yeah. You have a, a right to deny yourself and to reject the world that's going to pass away anyway and be a part of what God's doing for eternity. Amen. This is God's purpose. Hebrews 10, 14 says, For by one offering he hath perfected forever them that are sanctified. Amen. See, we don't have to question. We have to wonder about this. Well, can God use me? I don't know. Yes, God can use you. He sanctified you. He's perfected you forever. Verse 22 says, Let us draw near with a true heart in full assurance of faith, having our hearts sprinkled from evil conscience and our bodies washed with pure water so that God can use us. Amen. We are clean. We are clean, ready to be the temple of God, to be used by God. We belong to God. We have no right when you want to talk about rights, let's talk about rights. We have no right to be what we want. We have a right because we are sanctified by God to be used by God. I mean, if you want to talk about rights, we can't do what we want to do unless what we want to do is to keep our temple clean and prepared for the master's use. If that's what you want, yeah. well, hey, everything you want, the Lord's, he's, gonna, he's with you. He's working with you now. Amen. Who can stop the work of the Lord? Amen. We owe everything to God. It all belongs to him. Yeah. We owe nothing to the world, nothing to our flesh. Sin may tempt us, but we owe, we owe nothing. We can say, hey. We don't belong to ourselves. This isn't up for discussion. So this is profitable to us. Our desire is to please God. His desire has been and is to make you pleasing to him, to be used by him. The temple of God is not to be used for things unrelated to God. Amen. We see that if you don't, get this, if this, you can't understand this, things like fornication will result. We saw that in 1 Corinthians 5, 1, where he, Paul said, you're doing things that Gentiles won't even do. That's right. yeah. <laughs> that doesn't even make any sense. You belong to God. This, you don't belong to yourself to do what you want. So this is really refreshing, brethren. To be able to see this, to be able to take the chains of sin off, to be able to be free to do what we want. And that's to please our God and to be used by our God. Yeah. When tempted in anything, we can say no when it's not related to God. Amen. Is it okay to do this or that? Well, does it have to do with what God's doing? Because if it does, yes. A strong, resounding yes. yes. But if it has nothing to do with what God is doing, and it's unrelated to it, no. <laughs> mm. 
If it has nothing to do with God or keeping his temple clean and ready for his use, then make some cords and get rid of it as fast as you can. Because this is a higher thing, brethren. It's higher than just having a few commandments. It's, 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 it's eternal life. We can rejoice and find great delight that we have been chosen by God to be used by God for his pleasure and his purpose. Just the thought brings joy and peace to a tender heart. Thank you, brethren.